Well, anyways, <laughs> we don't know if we're going to put that this in this video or not, but if we do, you're welcome. Just random bits of knowledge. <laughs> When Linda and I get out and do our traveling, we always do it at a really relaxed pace. And generally in the middle of the day, we'll stop somewhere and make coffee. And that's what we're doing today. We're just out driving around. We've got a nice little park here. We're gonna make some coffee. Most of the time we just do it on our little uh, butane burner or propane burner. Uh, sometimes we get out our little wood burning stoves and we do it that way. And today that's what we're using. I've got uh, a stove here that I really like. I've got a stove here that I don't like at all and it happens to be a very popular style of stove and I'm going to show you why I don't like it and then a couple other stoves that I'll just throw in there for fun. How many cups of coffee are we making? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know, as many cups of coffee as it takes to do this demo. <laughs> Maybe we'll cook some lunch too. <laughs> all right, let's get busy. Well, this is the three different stoves I want to show today. This one's a little mini grill that we just got recently. It's sold on Amazon under several different names. Um, and this one is a what's known as a gasifier stove. And different companies make this one too. You can pay $20 to $70 for one of these. And this one over here is a little folding stove that I got through Backwoodsman Magazine and it folds up real small. All three wood burners. Let's get one lit. I think we'll start with this one right here. That's only been a couple of minutes. This one's already going pretty good. Let's see if we can get the gasifier stove going here. Well, it looks like we got them all going pretty good here. Throw a little more wood on this one. This one's easy to feed. The gasifier stove, you load it once and, uh, and then it'll burn for oh, a good hour if you lo really load it up full. I like this little one here because you can continue to feed it as you go along. And this one too is that way. Now this gasifier stove is starting to do its thing. Basically it takes air in through here and expels it into the top of the chamber for a more complete burn. And when it's sitting like this, it's working very well. And there's hardly any smoke coming out of this one. But this stove, as soon as you put a pot on it, like this, it stops the gasifier action. 
And now this one starts smoking and stinking. These don't, this one will start smelling of unburnt carbon. It's a real distinctive smell and when you're camping with it and you do this, you'll smell it. It's like an incomplete burn. I'm starting to get the whiff of that now from this one. This is the stove I don't like because of that. It's, I don't mind smoke coming out of a fire, that's fine. But this one's not getting a complete burn and also what it's going to do is going to completely soot up the bottom of this pot right here. Just real thick. If I take this off, it'll go back to doing its thing, burning clean. I wish I could show you somehow. You got all these fingers of flame coming out from the side, but when I put this pot on, it stops doing that. No longer clean burn, because it's just not breathing right. And as near as I can tell, they're all designed like that, and I don't think they're any good because of that. Put the pot on, and it starts smoking and sooting, and it's just not breathing. So this is my least favorite stove. Now this little stove is cool. There's a lot of stoves that have come up since this one came out. The Esbits and, and I can't remember all their names, but uh, little firebox stoves. This one is actually pretty heavy. This was early on before all those other ones came out. And this actually weighs a pound, one pound, four ounces. It's a little steel stove. But for having it in your car, it works great. And you can continue to feed it. It breathes all right. So that's a handy little stove. But by far my favorite of the three is this one down here. <laughs> and the reason is because not only can you throw a pot on top, and it does very well, you can throw a steak on top, but a pretty big one too, enough to feed both Linda and I. That's my favorite. Easy to feed, versatile. This is a nice little stove. Now you can really see that gasifier stove doing its thing there. But once again, when you throw the pot on top, it stops that. It starts burning real uh, sooty. So it looks good in the demos, but not when you actually use it. I can kind of see that it still has this little fingers of flame in there, but right now this one stinks. And it starts sitting and smoking. And you start to lose some of those fingers of flame in there too. Real inefficient. Not good at all. This little stove here is made uh, out of stainless, but it does it does discolor. It takes on kind of a brown color, not really rust, but just a discoloration, but I don't care. And it's only about $20 or $25 on Amazon. Not bad. I'll put a link to it at the bottom of this video in the description. This one you can feed. You, you gotta cut your pieces up real tiny for this one. This one down here is okay because you can put longer sticks in it and just keep feeding them in. That's kind of a nice feature of that one.
smells good. Looks good. I'd say we did pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it looks delicious. Shall see. Oh, it is delicious. We're not going to make you watch us eat this, but it's good. <laughs> Coffee time. Nice and hot. Mm, that was a good lunch. Yeah, that was restaurant gourmet. It was good. You ever use this milk? We get this at the grocery stores. It's usually in the powdered milk section. And uh, it keeps uh, without refrigeration for quite a long time. We take it on our camping trips all the time. This is good stuff. Cheers. Oh yeah. Another little stoves that I like to take along is these homemade alcohol stoves. This this is a Trangia that everybody's familiar with. And they're okay, but they're more of a um, warming kind of a burner. I mean, they'll boil water after a while, but they don't burn too hot. Lots of YouTube videos on making these. This one's made out of a energy drink can, just an aluminum can. You could make one in 20 or 30 minutes just at home, and you can, you can do it in your kitchen just about. They're real easy. This one's made out of a thicker aluminum fuel bottle. They're real tiny and they just run off of um, denatured alcohol. This is denatured alcohol, this, this heat. The one in the yellow, the one in the red has an additive in it, uh, which you don't want to use, but this the yellow, one in the yellow is, is all right. Just put in however much you think you're going to use. I'm not going to put a little bit in here because I don't tend to heat anything. And it's so windy here, this isn't going to give a good flame, but basically the, when it heats up, the flame will come out from around the sides here. The thing about alcohol, when it's burning, you can't see it, but it's burning. This probably doesn't show up on camera, does it? It need to do this in a darkened room, but the, there's little jets of flame coming out all around it underneath this pot. They burn pretty hot. It'll boil uh, 16 ounces of water in about, oh, I don't know, seven or eight minutes, I guess. Not bad. Really lightweight, good backpacking stove. that in the state of Montana you can be common law married common law married in just a couple of days <laughs> are you trying to tell me something there 
No. It's like, I remember when I was younger, of common law marriage, they said, oh, gee, that takes like five years or seven, seven years. years. And in the state of Montana, it doesn't take any time at all. All you need to do is just be living together as a married couple. Be known as a married couple. Yeah, kind of let people know that you're living together as a married couple. And be sharing expenses. And guess what? You're hitched. <laughs> That's true. It, there's no time limit. And I looked it up just out of curiosity. And there's uh, 12 or 13 states in the United States that allow common, that have common law marriage. And it looks like they're all like that. Oh, and both partners have to know and agree to that they're a married couple. Yeah. In other words, you can't pull it over somebody's... You can't trick somebody? Yeah. That's ah. what I'm <laughs> and you can go down and get a marriage license. Right. No time at all. There's no wait. You, people think it takes time to be, have a common law marriage, but you don't. Interesting, huh? Yeah. And <clears throat> the, if you split up, you have to get a divorce. And it's a regular divorce. Right. Yeah. It's good to protect the children, though. You know, if there's kids right. involved, you got to do that. You know. But yeah, it, common law marriage requires a regular divorce, just like anything else. And what brought that up is years ago, my daughter and her. Um, a fiance came and visited us one evening at the house and they said we're going to live together as a married couple and we don't we're gonna we're gonna do that now but we, we're, we don't we'll have the wedding in September and this was like summertime or something like that said we don't want to get married till September which they did and but by letting by saying that to us they were they were married at that point yeah yep and that's the way it was Hey, another cool thing in Montana, though, is anybody can officiate the wedding that you want. And I got to marry my daughter. Well, that sounded weird. You got to do the... I got to perform the ceremony right. for my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they recognize you as the, yeah. as a, as a, some kind of official in their lives or as a person who they take seriously. And that's kind of the way the law reads here in Montana. Yeah, I think it's a solemnization or something is the term. Solemnization? Solemn, you know, hmm. like it's a solemn thing. Hmm. Well, anyways, <laughs> we don't know if we're going to put that this in this video or not, but if we do, you're welcome. Just random bits of knowledge. <laughs> How's your coffee, dear? It's good. Great. Well, you guys, thanks for coming along. Hope we showed you something you can use. <laughs> and uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around. <laughs>